Hey there YouTubers, alright so we're going to take a look at the Tough Gaming H670 Pro Wi-Fi D4. I'm going to give you my thoughts on this motherboard. Now, this is uh, potentially the best H60 that you can buy for the money, alright. There will be some budget ones, Asus Prime will have one, but uh, you know this has all the features you really need, right. So let's get into it. Obviously supports LGA 1700 or 12th gen. This will support LGA 1800 or 13th gen in the future. So this guy is definitely, you know, forward thinking. So what are the awesome things related to that? Well, DDR5, eventually that RAM is going to become cheaper, right? Uh, so this is a motherboard for the future. This is a PCIe 5.0 by 16 graphics card slot right here, right? So you are set up for the future there when the NVIDIA RTX 4000 or whatever AMD is going to put out uh, comes out with PCIe 5.0, boom. You're in the game. You're not sitting wondering how much faster it might be. All right, so those are really some of the hugest things, but... What may be the hugest thing for this, for locked processors, and even, you know, if you decide not to buy a Z690, you could put an unlocked processor in here. This thing has the ability to adjust the block frequency, at least with the early BIOS versions. Now, um, there are cheaper motherboards out there that you can do this with, just so happens ASUS Tough Gaming B660M that guy is 180. This is running about 229. There's supposed to be a non-Wi-Fi version which should put this closer to 199. Um, and then, you know, that is one of the other huge things. People always ask me, does this have Wi-Fi? Well, this guy does have Wi-Fi, okay? If you can't see it from there, Wi-Fi 6. And I don't know, I have super fast internet. There's still a delay. Uh, another angle. Obviously, it comes with the antenna. So let's go back and talk about the other features. This guy has three, at least three M.2s. You have one here. Excuse me. This guy has four M.2s. You have one here, two here, okay, and then another one here. This guy comes with the, uh, the nice little M.2 screw that... You don't have to pull off the motherboard. Uh, you'll drop this down, rotate this, and it'll lock your M.2 in place. All right, so let's let's actually, we've talked about the highlights, really. Let's start talking about all the features I see. You've got a 1x8 and a 1x4. This is going to allow you to get the most out of your i7 and i9. You barely will see any difference uh, with the i5, i3, Pentium, Celeron, if you adjust your power limits to unlimited, okay? So it really starts at the i7. Um, i5, 12400F, I got an extra 100 points out of Cinebench R23. Not, you know, really worth it. So you could just pull a 1 by 8 on those. With the, one by, with the i7 and the i9, this is the ideal setup. I don't believe you'll get much more out of it if you had two 1x8s. CPU fan up here, CPU optional. So a lot of times I run a Noctua dual tower, dual fan CPU, but it comes with a splitter, so I don't really need the optional, but it's there if you want it. RGB header, ARGB, okay, so addressable RGB here. That's a big thing to a lot of you. 24 pin power connector coming from your power supply to power the motherboard USB 3.0 coming from your case uh, Is there a second one of those folks? That's kind of a Nope, they don't provide a second one. So that's kind of a The only thing I see on here kind of sucks uh, These days you want to have two of these Because some people buy cases that have four USB 3.0s on the front and you're going to be stuck only being able to use two of the four with this, all right? So that's kind of a bummer. 
uh, type C Charlie connector if your case has that on it. This guy has, looks like four, four SATAs here, two here for six, okay? Let's see if we missed anything else in the area. Now this does have decent power stages, um, just like all of the Tough Gaming seem to have. Here's your front panel connectors, folks. So uh, I always say, you know, this is the only two you really need. These are for your uh, power switch. Then you have the power LED here. You have your HDD and then your reset switch here. Here's for the PC speaker, in case you've got one of those. Here's another case fan. Another case fan here. Another case fan here. Case fan here. AIO there. There isn't one hiding up here. So, um, decent amount of case fans. This is ATX, so you expect more of those. We already said the SATAs. Talk about that. Two USB 2.0s. So this is nice, second graphics card slot, very far away from the first. So if you have an RTX 3090 and you want to put another graphics card in here, a smaller one, you are far enough away from this. And it would appear this guy is, uh, I'll have to look at it, it's probably PCIe 4.0. RGB, addressable RGB again, we called that out, the comm stuff. HD audio right here, okay. Two of the one inch PCIe's. These are good for uh, Wi-Fi cards, but they're not good for adding another M.2. Uh, if you need another M.2 after this, uh, I don't know what to tell you, you should have bought bigger M.2's, right? Because this thing has enough. CMOS battery, of course, most of you know what this is for, but uh, a lot of times, if you need to reset your BIOS after um, changing something in the BIOS, such as going too high with your RAM speed, this is a good place to go in there, pop this battery out, you know, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever, put it back in, boot your computer up, and it should go into BIOS and let you uh, put your RAM speed at the right one or, or whatever you might have screwed up. Happens all the time, very common. A lot of people don't know that, though. So, uh, of course, if you're not familiar with this, this is different from LGA 1151. This thing has got quite a bit more uh, torque on it, I guess you could say, when you, you crank it down. Some of the CPUs, you'll actually, um, this one looks pretty solid, you'll actually feel this thing bending. Um, it's weird, but this doesn't pivot from the top, pivots from the bottom. So that is a little different. This still, the arm still pivots from the top. CPU still goes in the same way. You see the um, arrow there. And then the slots, uh, or the grooves in the CPU are vertical. The last so many generations have all been uh, horizontal, so on the sides. So you can only fit this thing in one way. Um, so be you know careful when you're putting your CPU in. So what do we have on the I.O. shield? Built-in, right? You know my channels, I freaking love built-in I.O. shields. Why they don't all do this? Uh, it looks so much cleaner. Display port, HDMI, USB Type-C, four of these uh, USB 3.0s, and I always get these mixed up. So this is a, a you know more advanced USB, 2.5 gig, Wi-Fi 6. Then we have an awesome selection of audio here, right? Most of you won't ever use these, but uh, you will use the mic, the headphone, line. you might use line out, subwoofer, rear, and then, you know, you could use fiber optic to send this off to a stereo. So, I've got to tell you folks, I, I'm either getting this one uh, for my next motherboard or the B66M. I thought about the Z690, but for 12th gen, I'm not thinking I'm getting another lot processor. But we do want to get more 
CPU. So um, that includes potentially another i5, maybe. Uh, definitely an i9, Pentium, and a Celeron. You get a mother like this, motherboard like this, get a little more juice out of the Celeron and the Pentium, potentially. Definitely get more juice out of the i3. The i5, there's videos out there um, of what the B660M will do with a i5 12400F. And obviously there's going to be the 12500, 12600, if I remember correctly. Um, but I'm really holding out for the i9 12900. Uh, that's going to be my, uh, my favorite CPU. So, hey, thanks for checking out the video. And, uh, you know, just a quick rewind. PCIe 5.0 here, DDR5, Wi-Fi, base clock, frequency adjustment. This thing is pretty killer. Um, has a lot of the great features of Z690s, and then some that the base Z690s don't have. So, thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe, thank you.